Welcome to Commander Pop Culture, a place to gather magical information with some laughs, might I add. Hello everyone, welcome to my deck tech for Anzrag the Quake Mole. I imagine you're here because you feel like building it. I'm just going to talk about synergy pieces, and then I'll leave out the card advantage, the removal, and ramp packages. Uh, I'm going to leave those out, let's get right into it. Anzrag. He's a powerful god. Whenever he becomes blocked, untap each creature control, and after this combat step, there's an additional combat phase. Almighty god, we thank thee. Every time he gets blocked, you get to attack again with everything, not just with him. The mana activated ability is also nice because it forces everybody's creatures to block it with at least one thing. There is a bit of a knowledge piece to like playing against this. If you don't have removal to address the mole, block stuff till it dies and if you can't kill it that way, block with as much as you can to limit the amount of attack triggers that the player who controls this gets. So you gotta do some table talk. I don't think most people would do that. I don't think uh, in your average table people would think, you know, how do we stem the bleeding, I guess you could say. That's how you do it. You just have to make everything die as fast as possible to limit how many extra combats that you get. Should you not be able to have removal, should you not be able to kill it in combat, but that's what this deck is all about, is making it so you don't die in combat. And that's most of the synergy of this deck. We got Inara the Wilvid Familiar, gives your commander indestructible during your turn. Challenger Troll, each creature you control with power four or greater can't be blocked by more than one creature. If you force the mole to get blocked, this means that you could only block it with one creature at a time. <laughs> that lets you string your extra combats even further, and that's why it's in here. General Marholt Elves Dragon. It gives block creatures plus three plus three for each creature blocking it. It's an old school ability called Rampage. We haven't seen it in a long time, but it's basically that on a Dominaria United card. Goreclaw is a little bit of a ramp and synergy piece. Makes it so a creature spell with power four or costs two or less. And every time Goreclaw attacks, it gives all your creatures plus one, plus one, and trample till the turn. If you have multiple combats, you get stacking plus one, plus one, and trample. <laughs> I mean, you can't stack trample, but you know what I mean. You could, you could, you could get to stack the anthem effect, which is nice. And the cost reduction is also nice. Guardian on Winter gives your commander plus two, plus two, and Hexproof at instant speed. Hajar, Loyal Bodyguard. It's a two mana body that you can sacrifice to give legendary creatures indestructible till the end of turn. You most likely will only need to give Anzrag indestructible one time and you'll be the only thing with creatures in play. It's like a very expensive board wipe because that mana ability is uh, pretty up there but I have some ways to shortcut it. Uh, Blade Reforged, this is to serve as a card advantage piece. Every time she attacks you exile the top card of your library. If you're getting multiple attack steps you'll get to see a lot of cards and Lelia scales off those cards. She gets a plus one plus one counter every time you exile something. Nath, the Dire Hunt. This is another card advantage piece. Whenever one or more creatures control fight or become blocked, you draw a card. And then for three mana, you can double a creature's power and force it to be blocked. I have no choice. So you're segueing and cutting the Anzrag ability costs by less than half. Alluring Scent, this is a three drop card that uh, makes it so your creatures have to be blocked. Armed and Dangerous, same story. This one also gives First Strike, which is actually a really good keyword in this deck. It makes it so your your commander's harder to die. It only has um, four toughness, but if you deal damage first, it almost doesn't matter. It's almost just as effective as being indestructible. <laughs> just because attacking with eight plus power is uh, a pretty darn big number. Blizzard Brawl. If you have three snow permanents in play, it gives your commander indestructible and it makes it fight something. You almost don't care about the fighting part, but uh, you care more about the indestructibility piece. Compelled Duel for two mana. You give a stat increase and make it so your guy has to be blocked. So I know I said I wouldn't talk about the removal, but I'm going to talk about this kind of stuff. Um, all your removal in this deck kind of deals with non-creature stuff because uh, I'm relying heavily on the extra combats and forcing people's creatures to die. So I'm just gonna focus on taking away unnatural permanent types and Decimate does that just fine. It requires all four pieces to be in play for it to go off, but I actually learned something about Decimate embarrassingly. Even when I've been playing for as long as I have, I think it's been two decades, I still learn a ton of things on Magic and it's usually through the comment section of my videos and through Reddit and I appreciate it because um, I like being a stronger player and that's 
part of why I do this is I want to make all of you stronger players. So I learned that Decimate doesn't fizzle should one of your targets die on the stack. I don't know how long I've been playing Decimate and I've been quote unquote got by that and someone will sacrifice a permanent or destroy their own to make my whole spell fizzle, but it doesn't work like that. How it works is you need four targets and then if those conditions are met, you can cast a spell. If something should die before resolution, um, it'll try and destroy the other parts and it doesn't care that something else had died in the process. Thanks for that, I appreciate that. Your Resistible Prey. Uh, for one mana, you get the cantrip and make it so your Anzreg has to be blocked. Roar of the Challenge. Makes it so your creatures have to be blocked, but also gives your creatures indestructible because you meet the Ferocious Claws. I guess I could talk about this kind of ramp. I included Cultivate, Entish Restoration, and Kodama's Reaches because they're efficient ramp spells. They guarantee you future land drops and put a land into play. Sometimes you'll put two lands into play if you're missing a land drop. This is just to help you segue very efficiently to the seven activation costs of Anzreg. Just in case you don't have any of these pieces that make it so your guy has to be blocked, you can do it the good old fashioned way, the hard way. Your ramp package is a little bit heavier than what I normally do. Like I normally do like 10 to 12 ramp pieces. I think I'm running 16 in this deck. It fulfills a synergy need. Tamiyo's safekeeping. We're gonna make you indestructible. And it gives a text proof. It's just the nice acing on the cake. Terrifying presence. This is a fog effect that limits the damage dealt to all but one creature, i.e. your commander. So you'll go to combat, prevent all damage dealt to it, but your Anne's reg will be the only thing dealing damage. Tyvar Stand, almost never pay X into this. It's just for, again, the hexproof and destructibility piece. And it's at instant speed, so you could use it defensively as well. A Winds of Kaisama, there's, I think, three cards in total that are fogs that uh, don't reduce damage that your creatures do. And this is the second one. You meet the Ferocious Cause just with your commander, which is the only time you'd ever cast a spell. Maybe someone's trying to kill you and you don't have your commander. I mean, it's still a two mana fog at your disposal. In a way, this deck is kind of like a, a turbo fog deck, although I'm not running all the fogs possible, just the ones where I can make it as one-sided as possible. Withstand death, another cheap instant that gives your commander indestructible. If you don't remember, I talked about the importance of first strike. I like this equipment in particular because it has such a cheap equip cost and it gives you pretty much the three keywords that matter the most to you, which is first strike, trample, and haste. <laughs> That's like the unholy trifecta that you desire the most in this deck and Cherry has it. I mean, I could put Helm of Cauldra. It's just slightly less efficient, so I don't have it in here, but if you wanted to, it makes perfect sense to include it. Dark Seal Plate. I'm actually breaking the bank with this deck a little bit. Normally my my decks are super cheap and that they're on a budget. More expensive indestructibility equipment. That's because your card costs is typically really low. Like if you look at my list, everything's less than a dollar by a significant margin. I guess I'm splurging a little bit. Dolmen Gate is the second one. Prevents all combat damage dealt to your attacking creatures. And the other one I'm splurging on is Hammer of Nizan. Has an auto equip, gives your guy a stat increase, becomes a 10-4 and indestructible and Mithril Coat. All these indestructible equipment rose in price significantly. I think it's because of how popular Anzreg is. Like, I think the pre-order price of this commander is $30. I actually suspect that this card will actually hold on. I think you'll be paying a uh, minimal $20 for this card just because of how cracked the card is and I guess a lot of the hype that it generates. I expect it to be a very expensive commander even though Standard has been making a lot of not so monetarily valuable cards. I'd be happy if I could pick it up for 20 bucks. I think it's also partially because it's a mythic and it's gonna be hard to get. Warwick Battlehorns. Uh, I love the efficiency of this card. It gives your guy not only trample but it also makes it so you it can't be blocked by more than one creature. One fight at a time, fellas. Meaning you get to string on a lot of combats. The equip cost is super cheap. Alpha Authority, uh, Enchanted Creature gets Hexproof and can't be blocked by more than one creature. Does the same thing as Warwick. Bear Umbra, you'll get a ton of untapped triggers. 
if you can use your mana at instant speed, there's a couple of things in here that are great. Like you could ramp, you can interact with the board, I guess sink mana into Anzrag if you really wanted to, but it also protects your commander in that it gives it totem armor. Something I forgot to mention was Obscuring Haze. It's a free fog for just you. <laughs> uh, I've never went out of my way to include Obscuring Haze until now. It fits real nicely in this deck. Lure makes it so all creatures able to block a chain and creature have to do so. If you have this plus alpha authority, force them to block one at a time. <laughs> And then I got Song of the Dryads because I like neutering people's commanders. And then the rest are just land. I'm not going to talk about those. Like, some of them have utility. I'll include the list below. That's the deck. I hope you like my answer egg list. I hope it helps you construct one of your own. You have something to try out in the future at an affordable price. The deck comes out to be $162. If you wanted to cut corners and take away the cards I splurged on, like those four artifacts, you could save yourself maybe 16 bucks. So you'd probably be around uh, 146. So you're not really saving yourself too much. The cards that are in here that do fall in my normal price ranges, they're staples and they're extremely cheap. Hope you enjoyed. Take care now. Bye.